Hi there guys, my name is Chris Bowden and welcome to The Geek Group. And today we have this, made by Maxwell. It is a model 77073-1 and this is like 15 flavors of awesome because this is the kind of thing I wish they would let me autopsy more often. This particular one is verschnickt, so I get to take it apart. It's going to take a little mojo and I'm not going to tell you what it is yet because I want you to see if you can figure it out. But I will tell you that the, Max, the, the, the Maxwell that makes this particular thing is known for making high voltage pulse rated capacitors of which we have quite a few. So meditate on that while I try and find the right tool to get into this. which I certainly do not have. Ah! Ha! Maybe not. Maybe this one. Yes! Glory and victory! All right, so I, I'm going to have to take that off too, but I'm going to try and open this up without doing so yet. Now, frequently on these, I will throw parts all around the room. On this particular one, I'm not going to do that because this isn't some old dot matrix printer where I can get 20 more just like it. This is a big deal. And these are particularly hard for us to come by. I would like to thank my very good friend, you know who you are, for sending this in. He works at a rather serious research lab doing really cool things that I can't tell you about, working for people that I can't talk about, but he's a really nice guy. And he's in the process of sending us several semi-trailers of really fun stuff, so that could be some future videos for you guys. If you think autopsying something this size is fun, wait until we get to autopsy something that comes on its own semi-trailer. There's actually a zombie apocalypse happening in the next room, so if you hear some strange noises, that's what's going on. It's totally not construction happening on our all-new recording studio! where they are installing doors today, which is kind of cool. All right, so we're in. Let's open it. Oh. Now, we have this side. You can see we have two halves. Now, this half is flat. And there appears, we'll, we'll say it's brass, it may not be, but we'll say this is a nice big brass disc. And there's a little seal line around it because on the other side, it's recessed a little bit and there's some, some ridging and there's a big O-ring seal there, probably a buena en O-ring, buena en, buena, bueno, I don't know. It's a Spanish O-ring and in the middle, we have this little button, and if you look at both the button and the plate, there's some charring around here. So, there's your first big hint. And anybody in the high voltage world probably knows what this is by now, but can you figure out what this is yet? Now, we also have here a little, you can stop making that sound. We have a little connector coming out, connected to that. And now, if I pop this off, we can see that the brass disc is a big, thick, like it's a quarter inch thick chunk of metal. And 
there's this connection here and this, which is broken off. And if you look really closely, I don't know how well you guys can zoom in to see that, but if you look really closely down in the middle, there's a little tiny gap. Can you see that? Little tiny gap. So, I think, I could be wrong, but I think that that connector on the gap, because it goes in a nice straight line over to here, connected to what was inside there and is insulated from the disk. And I think the other side here is connected to the disk and you would connect to that here. Now, deeper in, we have another button. So these two halves are pretty much the same. We've got two buttons. And there's a hole here taking us out to this port, just like there's a hole here out to this port. And the two halves are pretty much identical, I think. So what we've got is two metallic buttons on either side of this, and it's going to be real fun to try and line that up and find out what goes where again, but I'm going to say it goes like that. And, and that's what you've got. So what is it? Here's your answer. This is a spark gap. It's a voltage controlled switch. And here's the reason why for some of the things inside it. First off, it's all sealed up tight and it's in like polycarbonate, the polycarbonates to take the abuse and the shock wave. The little ridges inside provide a longer path so it doesn't arc down. The buttons are your electrodes and you would connect out here. One electrical connection would be here and the other one on the other button and you arc across. And the little tiny connector here and here, this is your ground, and this is a trigger electrode. Or this would be the ground for the trigger electrode. So this is how you initiate the arc. And that where it gets really cool is these. These are your connections for gas movement. And depending on what you're doing with the, it's how you control the atmosphere inside it. Depending on what you're doing with that, you can do some pretty cool stuff. You can fill it with argon and bring up the voltage to a certain level and then vent out the argon really quick and that causes the arc to break down because the argon will suppress the arc. If you really want to suppress an arc, you could use uh, sulfur hexafluoride, which is a really good dielectric gas. Uh, or you could do fun stuff like pull a vacuum on it and make it break down earlier, stuff like that. So there's, there's a lot going on here and spark gaps are really cool science to explore. The downside is they're also really simple. So there isn't that much to see here. But we received a donation of like, I don't know, 40 of these things. And we're going to be using them in a Marks Bank coming up very soon. I may be using these. It's possible. We'll have to see. There's a lot to go into it. I may be able to use these to trigger Thumper, which could be really cool but I don't think I can get them to work as low as 1800 volts. That's really tiny. So we'll have to see if I can make thumper trigger with one of these. That could be kind of fun to play with. So that is a quick and simple look inside a Maxwell Spark Gap Model 77073-1. You guys have fun. Thank you for hanging out with me and exploring a cool little bit of awesome high voltage. I'm gonna put this back together now. As always, we'll see you next time. If you've only seen our videos, then you've only seen the smallest fraction of what the Geek Group is. It's a place where you can craft, improve on, manufacture, repair, rediscover, test, discuss, research, and share just about any project in a one-of-a-kind massive facility with tools and equipment you might otherwise never get the chance to touch, let alone use for your own projects. The Geek Group is a learning institution 
We're people with different skills, backgrounds, and perspectives, figuring out how to make ideas a reality and sharing those insights with everyone. To help you along the way and to get help from you are tens of thousands of members from around the world connected to the lab in real time through internet relay chat and live streaming video. A single-minded appetite for knowledge and a drive to create are traits common to all geeks. We found a way to amplify those traits, a way to give you the resources you need to improve lives. Get involved at thegeekgroup.org. We thank the Future Girl Foundation for the grant that made these videos possible. GIMS! and the thousands upon thousands of purchases and private donations from members and viewers like you that keep this place running. Thank you.